Hey everyone, today we're going to be making some Captain Rex armor out of some EVA foam, contact cement, plastic dip, and a bunch of paints. The main reason we're making this is for an ASMR roleplay on our other channel, so if you like that kind of thing, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description if you're interested. Um, so we're making everything from the waist up, um, so everything from the belt down. We'll probably make it some point in the future because it would still make a cool cosplayer costume and all the same concepts apply. Um, but we made the abdomen, the chest plate, the pauldron, shoulder pads all the way down the arm. Um, and then the helmet is the only thing that wasn't completely made from scratch. Uh, that we bought from Cybercraft actually quite a while ago, a couple of years ago. Um, but we did do some, some weathering techniques to kind of make it match the whole armor. Um, also, just a quick note, uh, we're making the animated version of Captain Rex. Uh, there's two versions. There's like the realistic, which is like the sideshow Hot Toys Rex. And then there's the animated, what you see on the, the Clone Wars. Um, so this is, this is animated Clone Wars Rex. Um, there's some differences with like the abdomen piece, the, the gauntlets and shoulders, and then the weathering and paint is a bit different. Um, and the helmet too. So anyways, jumping into it, we actually started this project like back in October of last year before we moved and we like moved from California to New York in the middle of making this armor. Now that we've moved, we have a second bedroom in this apartment, which is great because now we can use it as a craft room. So instead of having all of our armor pieces splayed out in our living room, we have them splayed out in a designated area. <laughs> Yeah, so instead of like our living room being a disaster, we just have another disaster room. Yeah, we just hide it away. <laughs> so if if you see an absolute mess of a room in all these shots, um, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was looking around online for different ways to make it. Um, we do have a 3D printer, but I didn't want to like print out the whole massive armor. Um, so I know a lot of people make costumes out of EVA foam, so I was just looking around online and I happened to come across um, a guy named Red Riser, and I'll put his Instagram and YouTube down in the description below. He does lots of clone armor and stuff. He actually has a template for clone armor that he offered totally for free, um, so I'll put a link to that too. If you want to download it and follow along, you can use his template um, and definitely go check out his YouTube. Okay, so we started off by printing out the template from Red Riser. Um, there's quite a bit of it and we cut out all the pieces and transferred it onto foam, EVA foam, and we made sure to like label it because he like labels it really well to make sure that all the pieces that should go together go together and like how, where the bevels are and all that stuff. So we made sure to transfer that information in. Um, it kind of reminded me of like sewing when you do like patterns and stuff, you just like make sure all that information's still there. There's some parts that are labeled bevel some of the time, we just like turn the knife sideways to like bevel the edge and give it like a slant. Other times uh, I use like the dremel to give it like a beveled edge, um, so instead of just like, you know, two pieces of foam stuck like this or like this, you can have like different angles to bevel them together. We used this nifty little thing this time around, which is like a squeeze bottle, which was really helpful because we were able to like control the amount of contact cement so it doesn't like get everywhere, which happened a lot in like the last Boba Fett armor thing. Um, yeah, and this time we, we made sure to remember how to actually use contact cement. You don't just gob it on and stick them together as we learned the hard way last time. Um, you put it on in a very thin layer and like scrape most of it off with like a scrap piece of foam and then wait for it to totally dry, like not tacky or anything, like completely dry. And then you stick it together and it like kind of like instantly uh, welds together um, and you get a super strong bond that's like sometimes stronger than the foam itself. So anyways, you can see the, the video of the shoulder pad, um, you can see we put contact cement on the, the inner edge of those cuts and then as you sort of pull it and push it together it kind of forms into like a curved shoulder pad um, shape and then you make two of those and then um, or glue them together because it's symmetric and you get like a really nice shoulder pad shape. And then here on screen now you can see the gauntlets.
it's all kind of the same concept. You just sort of follow the, the guide, um, cut along all the edges, bevel what you have to, so like kind of cut at an angle and then glue it all together um, with contact cement. And uh, here you can see both the gauntlets on a lot of the joints that were like, um, kind of had more stress, like the ones that like sort of held like tight contours together and like in a lot of the chest plate, um, when there's like a lot of things kind of pulling on each other. I, I used E6000, which is like a, a flexible glue, but it, it's like much longer drying than um, contact cement. And I, I went on the inside of the armor and just laid beads along all the joints to like really reinforce them and make sure none of them came apart. We have like the ab, the abdomen, and we beveled the inside. Put contact cement and then like squeezed it together to get that like, like kind of outline on the. Yeah, so it looks like it's like, it's just, like indented in. Yeah. So like it looks like it has like the appearance of like an indent inside, so you get like the silhouette and the shape of the armor and the abdomen. And again, like the 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 shape of the pattern also kind of like pulls it in to make that shape as well so and then um you know clone armor and captain rex has like these or at least the animated version has like these ridges that run on the abdomen um up and out and i found a technique online if you want to make like ridges or grooves um if you take a knife and score it in the shape that you want and then take a heat gun and uh like kind of just spray over the whole area then the the edges will kind of harden and the ridges will open up and it'll leave like a, a really nice groove um and then you know later you can go through with like weathering as well and make it pop even more so that's how we did a lot of these um kind of grooves um uh like the compad on the abdomen and a few different parts so um it's super easy you don't have to like excavate out or dremel film or anything it just kind of opens right up from the score line so anyways here's the chest plate, which is definitely the most complex part. Um, you know, this this part did require a little bit of thinking here and there and how like everything fits together and how to glue everything and hold it, but I did eventually figure it out. Um, I, you know, remade a few parts here and there and kind of had to squish some stuff together, but overall I, I think it, it turned out pretty well. Uh, this is the, the backside and, you know, even though you essentially don't see it at all in the roleplay video. I still wanted to like kind of give it the full detail. So I cut out all those little pieces for like the detailing on the, the back plate. Um, and then again, this part was a little bit tricky. You kind of, cause like contact cement, it bonds instantly. So you kind of have to like um, pull and push and pull everything and try to get it all lined up. And you know, the foam is pretty flexible and you can kind of stretch it and and really push it into place um, and it ends up looking pretty good and again we just went through and added like a layer of E6000 over all the joints to make sure they're super strong. Okay and then here it is uh, joining in the the front piece and the back piece so again it's just contact cement along the edge and push it together and it you can see it pretty much instantly bonds the two sides and you get super nice bond um, and on uh, his original template he actually has the sides open with like magnets um, but I discovered I can actually fit down inside of it while just closing those up um, so your mileage may vary on that kind of test it out, like we taped it together and made sure I can get out of it, get in and out of it. And when I could, we just glued it up. But, um, so, you know, just check for yourself if you want to make the armor. The, the next step in the process is dremeling the whole thing. Um, so, you know, you can't always get the foam perfectly aligned and you always get like misalignments and you get like kind of oddities and all like issues with the foam and whatnot. So, Essentially, you know, I just took a Dremel, um, as what most people do with the barrel sander, and just smooth out the whole surface, remove any imperfections, kind of level everything out. Um, instead of like, you know, misaligned foam, you can get like a nice smooth surface. And then the next step after I Dremeled all the, the ridges down was to use uh, a product called Quick Seal, like a kind of like a household silicone. You use it to like seal up edges and whatnot. 
um, but it's sandable and it happens to work pretty well for for armor and stuff so you can kind of lay a bead across the edges and use like a little bit of water and like your finger or paper towel and just smooth out all the edges um, so you know again things don't always end up perfect with the foam but with quick seal you can get in all the, the nooks and crannies and get like a nice smooth surface and like bevels and fi fillets and everything and it's part of the process is really just like helping out the finish and before we start putting on plastic dip and everything to make sure you have like a smooth base to begin with here's the the pauldron um again this part was was pretty easy compared to like the chest or like the gauntlets um you know it's just like you cut out the shapes and you glue them together it kind of looks like what you see um and then there were a few grooves that were a bit bigger that we didn't want to just use the the score and heat technique and we just used the dremel um you can see kind of all the pieces coming together um and then what i was talking about before uh the quick seal is super sandable and you can get a much better finish by just giving it uh, a quick sand get rid of all the ridges and edges that kind of show up from um, doing it by hand and then for the pauldron i wanted to I can't actually get my head through the armor with the pauldron on, so um, we took like pretty strong magnets that we got off Amazon and uh, we glued it on the inside of the chest piece and on the inside of the pauldron in place um, and it, it snaps on pretty well and it's pretty secure. Um, and that's like all the kind of armor smithing done and you can see now this is like the first fit test um, as far as what I'm wearing underneath it, it's literally just a like black turtleneck and black glove liners that we bought on Amazon. Um, so it's nothing fancy, um, you know, you can buy it for like 20 bucks total. So now it's time for painting and we started with plastic dipping everything. That's me, the <laughs> respirator, and we Initially, we're gonna make a paint booth in our craft room. Um, unfortunately, that did not work out at all. Uh, I think it's probably because the room is like too small. And the the overspray just ended up getting, filling up the whole room, and we probably would have poisoned ourselves in the process. Um, so yeah, begrudgingly ended up going to our fire escape to do all of this and hopefully our landlord doesn't see this because I don't know if I can actually do this. <laughs> so for plastic dipping you should heat up the plastic dip before you use it like uh, I think it's like 10 for 10 or 15 minutes I forgot how long I usually like leave it there for a while while I start putting all my gear on. Um, uh, so yeah you just put it in like a warm like in a container with warm water and then just like put in the can in there and it really like helps like uh, loosen up the plastic dip so it doesn't like clump up or anything while you're using it uh, which really helps with getting like a great finish and everything oh. <laughs> and we ended up using our light fixture in our living room as a hanging apparatus which proved to be very useful <laughs> and then we started painting it white uh, we used this rust-oleum satin paint primer white in the beginning we weren't actually sure if we wanted to plastic dip mostly because of the failed paint booth and time constraints we felt bad that this video was taking forever so we were gonna skip that whole part but then we realized that it's kind of like an important step to prime and have like rubberized. a rubberized finish before you actually put in like the paint so here are all the pieces painted hanging nicely from our handy dandy chandelier and now it was time for the airbrush, which was very exciting. I've never used an airbrush before. So we started off using it with the pauldron um, by painting those sections blue and I masked everything. We used the Vallejo Air model paint set. Um, you can use, you know, pretty much any model paints in the airbrush, but the nice thing about the air is that they're already thinned down, so you don't have to worry about thinner um so we're you know still beginners with an airbrush so we didn't want to have to like mix and match a, a bunch of stuff so just getting like the air set right off the bat um and we can just kind of put it right into the thing and it worked without much issue um yeah we kind of got like a basic like color set um 
that made sure to include blue and white and uh, had some nice weathering colors. Um, so we mixed like blue and white a little bit to get this nice like blue color trying to like match it towards like the helmet that we have now and yeah so we just masked all the parts that didn't need to be blue and oh I would suggest that when you do do this to mask like all of it like how the gauntlet is masked right now like anything that's not blue to just completely tape over because when we did the shoulder pads I didn't mask it completely and there was some blue overspray that I later had to go over with white mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I start painting I just kind of go for it <laughs> and I just had tunnel vision and then did not think of uh, recording any of it apparently so <laughs> Uh, this is the final weathering on the blue section uh, before we added any of like the grimy uh, brown and like uh, black and gray stuff yet. So this is just like on the, the blue sections. So since we were doing the Clone Wars Captain Rex, this is how like based on the reference pictures that I've taken, this is kind of like how it looks. Uh, so for the weathering for the blue section, I used a, like a thin a brush with white paint to go over to make like little fine scratches um, and I use the airbrush for like the bigger sections to like bleed into like the blue so it looks like the blue has been like fading away after like countless battles and in order to like make it not like just like a big blob of just like airbrush um, radius I went in with like a dry brush with some white paint so that it gave it more of like a like a scratched off paint feel. Oh, and then I used a fine brush to add the tally marks on like the hands and uh, the gauntlets too. So then here I added the, the brown weathering, like some brown and grays. A lot of the, the helmet had a lot of like brown kind of grime weathering. So initially I was just using like black and like white to like have like a, a gray feel but I added the brown so that it would like match the helmet more um have like I guess like more of a mud feel um so anyways for the the blasters Captain Rex's two DC-17s um it's not too complex essentially they just glued a bunch of foam together and then followed a template from SKS props I'll also put a link to their channel down below, they, they have like a, a nice um, kind of like reference picture of a DC-17. Um, so essentially just glue a bunch of sheets of foam together to get the right thickness, um, cut it out to the shape of the blaster, just kind of following the template, similar to the armor template. Um, and then all the little like, you know, greebles and, and pieces um, kind of added on. Um, so yeah, here's the the blaster, you can see it's not too complex. And um, from the, the shape at the back, this little round piece is just like two foam circles that I cut out. Um, and the way I make these is just like, use a compass to, you know, draw a circle onto the foam, cut like an octagon around it, and then just use a Dremel to like round out the edges until you get like a nice circle. Um, and there is a mistake on this. Uh, I didn't realize looking at just at the template because um, you know, just like a, a flat image. You can't tell if these are embossments or like engravements. This is actually supposed to be in um, and I put it out, but um, I don't think anyone's noticed yet. <laughs> so I'm telling you right now, um, I do realize that um, this part is wrong. And there are a few details that like I just didn't include here and there because, um, you know, they're not in it super long. Um, I think this is something that um, might work a bit better 3D printed or a little bit faster 3D printed because you just lay it on the bed instead of like all these big complex armor pieces. Um, so in the future, maybe I'll do that. But, um, you know, again, a shout out to SKS Props. Uh, this is definitely a, you know, nice template to work from. And I think the end product looks pretty cool. And you also then, you were gonna like use a PVC pipe. Oh yeah. So yeah, anyways, this is just like a thinner piece of foam that I kind of just like bent around and glued and it doesn't look the greatest, but I, I think it gets the job done. Um, you know, it, it looks like a DC-17, so that's kind of what I was going for. Yeah, so if you have like a, if you want a quick hack of how to make a fake barrel, <laughs> <laughs> not have to get a PVC pipe. <laughs> Anyways, this is like 
kind of a whole separate thing. This is a DC-15S. Um, this is 3D printed. This isn't made out of foam. Um, and I actually printed this like a while ago and finally glued it together and we plastic dipped it and gave it a bit of weathering. Um, you know, I think in a perfect world, probably would sand it a lot more, use a lot more Bondo and kind of smooth everything out, but it looks okay from a distance. Um, but this file, this 3D print file was from Galactic Armory. Um, so, and like, it's all kind of spliced up so it fits on a printer bed. So, um, this isn't really part of the tutorial, but just thought it was worth mentioning. That's how, um, you know, we made the DC-17, was just 3D printing it and gluing it together. So we're almost done. After doing the weather, I can't realize that I almost forgot to do the weld lines. Um, so, unfortunately, <laughs> by the time we got to this step, I crapped out our airbrush. Um, I ended up breaking, like, the nozzle part. Uh, I didn't think that, that I would be able to break something so quickly, but <laughs> apparently uh, those, I was looking up this like video of how to clean an airbrush and the girl was very adamant about how careful you need to be and I was like, oh well, surely I can't break this and it turns out I can. So uh, I ended up doing this part with acrylic and like just the paintbrush and you know I thought it was gonna look really bad but I feel like on camera it doesn't look that bad and I think it does match like the the weld lines on the helmet uh, I just basically did like a light blue and then put a streak of white uh, in the middle to like give it that effect of uh, like uh, the same like weld effect that it has on the helmet yeah and then to to sort of match the aesthetic of the helmet to the armor the, the helmet wasn't quite as weathered. Um, they, they went a little bit light on the weathering from Cybercraft um, and we wanted to match the way it looks on screen. Um, so we kind of gave it like a browny gray black coat. Um, and it's pretty easy. You just like paint it on and then take a paper towel and dab it everywhere to give it like a nice layer of, of grime. Like, you know, kind of looks like it was thrown in the mud and picked up and wiped off, um, you know, sort of like on bar. <laughs> so anyways that all being said time for the big review <laughs> um so anyways here's the finished armor um it's not perfect you know there are flaws here and there but it, it's decent you know it's the the second armor we made ever and like the the first armor was boba fett so it was like a lot of soft goods with like armor plates kind of pasted on so this is like our our first time doing like kind of big armor plates that all kind of like you know go together instead of just like on fabric um so it's not perfect it's a little bit amateurish but it's we still think it looks it looks pretty decent considering i think this time around it kind of went better i feel like it looks better than like our boba fett one just because we had a template to go by um uh, boba fett we did a lot of it just like ourselves we're like eyeballing um based on like reference pictures so I definitely think that structurally it's like a lot more accurate probably um, thanks to the template. Um, but yeah, I think we did like a pretty good job. I realized while we were filming the ASMR video that I had forgotten the tally marks on Captain Rex's, mm. uh, I think his right, right. gauntlet yeah. uh, on the, like the white section. He has like some black tally marks, uh, which I was really bummed out about when I realized that I looked like to my left and saw the hot toy and I was like, oh wait, that's not on our room. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, um, definitely have to add those in, but that's like a quick fix. I could just add that in with the, luckily it's just like putting in some thin lines with black paint. So that's not too big of a deal. I don't know if anyone realized that from the ASMR video, but I didn't see any comments. So, um, but yeah, I think we did a decent job <laughs> yeah i think it looks pretty good and i think we'll we'll probably make the the bottom half um at some point uh kind of like all the the complex stuff is mostly in like the the chest um so the the bottom is just like kind of similar to the arms um nothing too complex so um if you want to make the full armor just like use these same techniques and you know definitely let us know if you have any better ways or, or think of something better um we're you know always down for feedback yeah. uh, anyways uh hope you guys enjoyed um 
check out the ASMR video on Star Wars ASMR if you want to see the the armor in action and let us know uh, if you have any comments or tips uh, or any suggestions of armor to make in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so hope you enjoyed. Bye. See you. <laughs> so good.